to GMFB. We're presented by Old Trapper Beef Jerky live in New York City. Lots of fun happened on the other side of the country last night, so we'll get to that. It's Tuesday, October 5th. My name's Kay Avis, Peter Schrager, Kyle Bryant here, as always, with our brother from Good Morning Football Weekend, Michael Peace. Robinson here. Oh, What's up, dude? Oh, thanks for that. We are. Penn State, man. man. Come on. I'm ready for Iowa this week. Go get me started. Woo! I'm ready. Three versus number four. I'm ready that is for Iowa game. this week. Okay. Let's get it. You are a Let's Super Bowl champ who wants to talk Austin Eckler. And oh, we yeah. will <laughs> here on the show as we've got the lead block and highlights from the Chargers and Raiders in matchup last night. Let's go from New York to L.A. You guys want to see something really cool? Let's Check this out. There's the two logos and everything, but watch what happens here. Nature! Whoa. Bam, bam! Oh. Lightning does struck twice. In fact, it happened three times cool. for the Chargers in this game. Early on, third and goal. Herbert. <clears throat> who is that? Donald Parham. Undrafted guy out of Stetson. Apparently, that was the Kevin Durant dance. Right? <laughs> I'm looking at this. One. They go. They had a lead guy uncovered. Refro. 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 Right. So the guy was uncovered, the gunner. So the punter throws to him. How did Refro said, No. Great Ba-boom. football instincts right there. Great Unbelievable football instincts. play. He's only 5'10, 185, and one of the best hits of the year. 7 0 now. Are they going to pile on? This one. Another laser. Oh, oh my God, God, this Justin yes. Herbert. Oh my Jared Cook, a massive target. You want to see a beautiful pass? Micro, look at the touch on this. One. Running back. Yes. All right, Get so the crowd cover. is on. That was right before the half. It's 21 nothing. These Raiders have been a great story, but they're getting rowdy here. But hold on, they get one back. Now it's 21 to 7. Derek Carr, what do you got? Make a statement. Do something for it. Look at Darren Waller. Are you out of your mind? That's not fair. That is like a flip. And he's going to flex on it. He also got a ridiculous taunting taunting. penalty. Like an eight, eight, the worst one. Taunting. Fourth quarter, 21 to 14. Here's some fireworks for you. Here's your lightning. Rugs. Woo! And Chase got it. Behind you. Woo! They torched him. We call that a rug burn. And they got it bad in the Raiders fans there. But now on a third and three, they call it third and Renfro. Looking, looking, bam. Sacked by Christian Covington. Remember the sack. We're going to talk about it in a few minutes. Christian Covington show. had a great history on the show. <laughs> Played the flute or something. <laughs> 21 to 14. On a fourth and two, Brandon Staley, you nut. Absolutely got it. Herbert Ice in his veins. And second and four. Here is your that dagger. Work. Look at that. Yeah. Now watch, Austin Eckler is going to do the heavy metal, the air guitar. He told us on this show he's listening to Disturbed when he does that. Really? And the Raiders get stupefied. He did. That's, of all things, he likes <laughs> Disturbed. 28 to 14, Raiders fans slightly disturbed after this. But let's hear from Justin Herbert, who's got kind of a Steve Belichick type look going here, saying we wouldn't have won this last year. <laughs> It's one of those games that, you know, we might not have won last year, uh, but it's great to see from the defense going out there and, and holding them down and uh, the offense going down and scoring. And um, I think it's huge because, you know, we bounced back after a big win against Kansas City last week. Um, but, you know, it's always about the next week. It's always about the next opportunity. And, uh, you know, we, we play an incredible Browns team next week, and, and it's all about them. And so we're going to enjoy this one for a little bit, but uh, show up to work tomorrow and get watching the film. It was noisy from the Raider fans in the building, of course. Early, noisy, but then Justin Herbert said, no, 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 this is my house. Peter, what'd you make of the Chargers handing the Raiders their first loss of the season under the bright lights and the lightning of Monday Night Football? This isn't our typical Chargers team. That's what I got from this, and they're not coached like a Chargers team is typically coached. They are living free, and they are willing to just let it all out there. They're up 21 nothing. The Raiders come right back, and you start thinking, okay, here we go. And this is what we do. We're the Chargers. It's 21, oh. it's 21 to 14. It's third and three. Take a look at the play call here on third and three. In the fourth quarter, Brandon Staley, third and three. Let's get across the 50, and let's get it. Eh, incomplete. All right, bring the punt team on here. Remember, it's a seven-point game. Bring, Brandon Staley, without any hesitation, sends the guys right back out on fourth and three. Aggressive. And they convert, and they would score a touchdown six plays later. This is not what the Chargers used to do. They would put the game away. They would take their foot right here on this play right here, and they said, you know what? We're going to shove it on your neck, and we're going to suffocate you, and you are not going to have a chance to get back in this thing. Chargers of old, maybe they punt. Raiders tie it, then there's a missed field goal, something. I love how decisive Brandon Staley is. Last week, he went for it on a fourth and nine in Kansas City. Last night, with the game feeling like it might be slipping away, they fail on third down. He says, no, 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 send the guys right back out there. I trust our quarterback. I trust our offense. You're going to keep doing this? It's working. I mean, I wonder if it burns them. It's working. It is working. It's working. And the, the defense is playing really well as well, and we can go into those numbers later in the show. But the fact that they're playing and saying, 
you're going to have to get us off the field. We're not going to take go. ourselves off the field. It says a lot. It's a new Chargers team. Let's embrace it. It's a new Chargers team, and I think they have all the confidence in the world in their quarterback. That's why you go for it on fourth and nine. That's why you take the chances on fourth mm -hmm. down. This guy, uh, Justin Herbert, is surgical in his approach to throwing mm. the football. But I think you can be that when you have a, a part of the football, a part of your game, a part of your team that you can lean on. And they lean on this run game. Austin Eckler was amazing last night. And it's because that offensive line is one of the best offensive lines in the National Football League. He took it outside. He took it between the tackles. He's a, he, he runs with natural leverage. I don't mean to talk about him being short, but he runs with natural leverage, yes. which gives him an advantage in the run game. Running behind this big offensive line. I saw, just, I saw Justin Ooh. Herbert under center more. I mean, when this guy was coming out of college in the combine, I remember making a comment during the combine saying, I'm not so sure this guy's going to be able to go in the center mm. because he hadn't done it that much at Oregon. He gets on the center. He's able to, to they, they're able to run the ball with him under center. And that's what makes this team deadly, man. I mean, they controlled the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. They got after uh, Derek Carr. If they could continue to do this, I, who's going to beat them in the AFC? They're really good. Who's going to beat them? They're really good. <laughs> I found out something last night about Eckler I didn't know. Steve Levy said on the broadcast, his nickname is Pound for Pound. Because mm -hmm. they believe he's the strongest player in the league. He looks Pound like for him. Pound. He is so strong and so good. Both of these teams are really good. Like, they're, they're, I don't really think I take away, like, ah, the Raiders don't have it, the Chargers. They're both really good. And the storylines, the Chargers didn't fold. Mm -hmm. And also, when the Raiders got down 21 or nothing, they didn't they go didn't and die either. either. They yeah. fought. Like, they both have fight. And speaking of fight, um, there was an awesome quote last night. If you love the rivalry, take a look at Joey Bosa had to say after the game about the Raiders quarterback. <clears throat> <laughs> we knew once we hit him a few times, he gets really shook. Ooh. And you saw that on Covington sack. He was pretty much curling into a ball before we even got back there. He did. Great dude, great player. But we know once you get pressure on him, he kind of shuts Ooh. down. Oh, Joseph Bosa. Put it this on is tape. the Chargers pass rusher on the Raiders quarterback, who was the MVP front runner going into last night. And this has every single bit of scar tissue and muscle memory from decades of Chargers Raiders. Mm. Put him in Oakland, put him in LA, put him in Vegas, wherever you want, that is still there. Those are major, major fighting words. Let me translate that. He's nervous and gets happy feet when you hit him. And you know what? There's a lot of report about Carr over the year about maybe he's soft. I don't believe that, but apparently the Chargers do. And uh, he did curl up on that Covington sack, and he did get ready for the hit. And next time they play, remember that quote because Bosa will be a marked man. I mean, that, that is what we show up for. But most of your quarterbacks that aren't movers, that aren't runners, they get shook when mm. they get hit in the pocket. Mm -hmm. I mean, I get what he's saying, but you can say that about a lot of our courts. Is there something about Derek Carr specifically that sort of gives off that energy? Uh -huh. Don't get me started on okay. it. But, uh, mm -hmm. I, I, do, I, I do think that teams, that's, a, that, that's something that they game plan about. Mm -hmm. Hit them. Even if you get a little bit of a 15-yard penalty, Hit them. make them think about it later the on. The reason I know that the Chargers are a different team is that even when, you know, they, even when a team beats a team on a, on a big primetime game. Somebody at the table in the morning wants to talk about the other squad. And we'll get to the Raiders, of course. Yeah. But unanimously at the uh, breakfast table this morning, at the in the meeting, <laughs> everyone said, no, I want to talk Eckler. No, I want to talk Staley. Everyone wanted to pick their different lane to go on, which means it's complete. It's also the front office and getting Rayshon Slater. Absolutely. Of course, to draft him, what a value Absolutely. he was. Uh, what they did on defense, we haven't even gotten into. Derwin James being back and healthy and being a dominant force. Mm -hmm. But to me, the you know, you, he could not have played a better first half. Justin Herbert. Three touchdowns, 174 yards in the first half. It was insane. Surgical, as you said. But in the second quarter, uh, second, or second half, rather, when the Raiders are trying to make some sort of run or something happen, Michael, I was like, usually that's when I'm sort of waiting for my, the team that I, like five years ago, I've been going through this heartbreak and these roller coasters. They're going to collapse. They're going to, or they're going to make it interesting. They're going to give me a heart attack. They're right. going to take years off my life. I didn't have that thought for a second because of Justin Herbert, which is a very new sort of uh, enterprise for me. Well, again, He's big in stature. He's, you know what I'm saying? He doesn't say a whole lot. He has a big arm. And then I like to see how his teammates react to him when he does something great. Okay. Right? When, when, when Justin Herbert makes a big pass, when he threw some of those touchdowns, look at the sideline. Look at how the guys want to rally around him. He's the true leader for that team. And I think if this team continues to grow, mm -hmm. they learn how to win the tight games like, we, like we're starting to see him do it. Again, like I just said before, mm -hmm. who's going to beat him in the AFC West? Mm -hmm. And I'm including Kansas City in including that conversation. Kansas. Well, they've got the Browns up next, so Strikes, you can speak to this. Like He keeps, he looks like he's getting better and better every week, and his team is. But it's been big game. Like, well, I'm not used to the Chargers also. Too big 
games. <laughs> big games, one after the other. At Arrowhead, and then to beat the Raiders, and now Cleveland. Like, you go through this stretch with yeah. three wins? Okay. I'm not here for the normalization of Justin Herbert. There's this sense of, like, the young quarterbacks are so good now. It's, he's different. No, he's this different. This is not normal. Yes. Yeah. Look at Lawrence and Fields and Wilson and all these guys now. Like, Herbert didn't look like that. This, this is not normal, and do not be spoiled by this. He's special. Is there one thing that changed your mind from your whole offseason spiel of why are we giving him a gold jacket? He won Rookie of the Year. Like, you weren't <laughs> sold. You had to be yeah. sold. What was that selling point? The, he won an Arrowhead. He beat Mahomes yeah. in Arrowhead, and then this was the letdown week. Mm -hmm. And they're 21 nothing. and then they're going to blow the lead. Like, this guy, his pulse is like this, and he is so poised. I think they win an Arrowhead, and now they beat the Raiders in the Raiders Stadium. This guy's awesome. He's Chargers awesome. Brown's going to be really interesting. More on this Joe game, Lombardi's more on working. the AFC. Mm. Well, well, I'm sure Chiefs fans tweeting my friend Michael Robinson. Hey, I say they beat him fair and square. And he'll go to Tom <laughs> Pelissero. He is joining us right now. The Niners are facing the NFL's only undefeated team, the Arizona Cardinals. There's some going on, of course, on Sunday, Week 5 slate. What uh, is the latest on the injuries at San Francisco? Perennial is dealing with, but not usually at the quarterback spot. Jimmy Garoppolo, what's going on? Okay, Jimmy Garoppolo's calf injury might not be as bad as Jimmy G himself originally thought. 49ers coach Kyle Shanahan told reporters on Monday that it's really more of a bruise or a contusion on his calf as opposed to a muscle strain. So Garoppolo is still sore at this point, but the hope is that he progresses enough that when they reevaluate him on Wednesday, he will have improved and have a good chance to play this week against Arizona. Now, Garoppolo could not really push off that calf after he got injured early this past week in a loss to the Seahawks and ended up giving 